Lightbringers of the Nord, Secrets of the Occult Tradition of Finland is an ABC book on the Finnish spiritual world and is written by the now deceased Perttu Häkkinen and Vesa Iitti. I've butlished a review of the book, but for this piece I wanted to discuss a side note I made while reading the book. It's not just a deep dive into Finnish secret societies, but the book also works as a civics lesson on the Finnish right-wing politics. In fact, I would go even further and say it's a case study on the civics of esoteric right-wing movements, where Finland is the studied subject. While watching this video, I want you to think, does your own country have similar movements or characters? I am of those people who see history and human nature as cyclical. The events are the same, but the actors have just been replaced. Each generation faces its own challenges and invents its own solutions, repeating this process over and over again. You won't find about Heinrich Himmler's interest on the people of Karelia, nor the burning bush of Elias Simojoki, but if you think populism, open borders and close debates on immigration, the politicization of folklore are a new phenomenon, well, this book will give you whole new lenses on the world. Let us begin with the original Donald J. Trump, the fat populist who loved women, attention and the exhilaration that attention provides. I'm talking, of course, about the Archbishop of Lucifer himself, Pekka Siitoin. As we all know, Fischer Jami is real and it's obvious Pekka Siitoin is nothing more than a degenerate serial wanker, copying the homework of Manly Palmer's The Secret Teaching of All Ages. Alongside reading the Gappala, he created his own cult of satanic worship from the seeds of Jewish mythology. Finnish people lived in a different kind of Finland before the internet made us all global. Finland used to be Lutheran, but today we get the same tired nonsense about democracy from the church as any other civilized western nation. Christianity was something to be opposed back in the day, hence Lucifer was made into a god. In his honor, the Satan worshippers prayed, ate pussy and uh, boiled different kind of pussy alive. So in other words, uh, Pekka Siitan would make a perfect candidate for our Prime Minister's party today. If you know, you know. So I must tribute Siitan for his entrepreneurship, as he even got the father of Battery, Gorton, to buy his book, The Black Magic. Hopefully that book helped create a Battery song or two. So I'd give props for Siitan for being quite the salesman. He found Nietzsche markets where he succeeded at. As times went on, in order for Satan to be a contrarian in a society where God is dead, Satan worshipping just does not cut it. Hence, to keep up with the times and for him to oppose the rising trend of globalization and open borders, <laughs> he became a national socialist. I guess Satan just started ignoring Satan, so he had to turn to esoteric Hitlerism. See, he really was ahead of the curve and could see where the trends were emerging and the money would flow. Today he'd probably be a shit coiner, that's for sure. It's so obvious from reading his story that he was just making up shit. Again, with the death of Christ, the popularity of Satan worshipping just didn't have the same edge, so Sitoin and his partners in crime began looking for inspirations before the time of Christ. Paganism. Kalevala, the Finnish natural epic of our people, has been published over 50 times and gives us Finns our own culture and mythology. It's our gateway to the Iron Age and beyond. Our folklores were gathered and written down into one epic odyssey by the poet Elias Lönnrot. Some trolls and lunatics claim that Lönnrod just drunk local Karelian peasants and raped Kalevala with his Christian perspective as he supposedly cut out elements involving shamanism. For all you haters out there, I say this. Make your own Kalevala then. <laughs> I mean, that's what the lesson of this book is as well. Let's examine the pagan roots of the Finnish master race. 
Today the internet is uh, full of right-wingers that uh, Finnish people on the left would rather wish one quarter of all Finns should be banned off social media. There are of course many subcategories of right-wing people, and for me I've always been fascinated by the pagan perspective. Even in Finland you have those of us LARPing as pagans, but before the age of the internet they were only a small group of people with their own little magazine. The National Front magazine gave its readers esoteric Hitlerism, fascism, paganism, Hinduism and mysticism from the wild 90s. Väine Kuisma from Lahti wanted to make our national epic Kalevala as our new core Bible. Kalevala shows the Finnish people at their peak. Let us seek strength from them. Now, that, if anything, is a bold statement for neo-pagans and nationalists. Friedrich Nietzsche's Overman is also praised by Kuisma, as the guy was a clear gym jockey who enjoyed the path of discipline and hard work. Ah, sweet pain, suffer, sweet suffer, is how he lamented on his time at the Temple of Iron. However, an interesting side note, on Nietzsche is that nowhere was the dynamic nature between Apollo and Dionysus referred. Perhaps it's because the Bird of Tragedy's Finnish translation had such a small print? That's a hint to all the Finnish book publishers. Get it out again! What I found most peculiar was that on the internet today you can find this esoteric bodybuilding circle with its spotlight character, the Bronze Age Pervert. Has this book ducks this anonymous bodybuilder as none other than Vaina Kuisma? Did we all confuse his Romanian accent for that of a Finnish? A Pekka Seton was the Finnish bullsitter of Satan. All that alcohol and cod can make even the toughest Nazi clown to lose the remaining bits of his sanity and come up with the wildest conspiracies out there. Later on, his life he uncovered, or perhaps made it up, I'll leave it up to you, legends how Finland used to be the master race. So today, historians in Finland truly have to ponder, was Finland once the slave race or the master race? Truly questions for Plato at the University of Helsinki. <sighs> what Seton had to say about Jews or darker skin tone people is just best left unsaid. These influences were again taken from Nazis or shit was just made up to create an image of the Finnish master race. But the father of all master race theories has to come from my own father, so let me tell you of the saga of Buck. This secret esoteric knowledge was passed down orally for hundreds of years in the family lineage. It wasn't until the Jester Buck decided to break this tradition and gave this knowledge to everyone, for free, might I add. Think what a start he was. The secret of Buck was like our very own Sambo, but now the Prometheus of Finland unleashed the fire and told us our great truths. I may have never known my father or, or what motivated him to tell his secrets, but at least now with the release of this book, the whole world can know that Finland is the original Atlantis and Sveaborg is the real Jerusalem. I cannot wait to see the American military industrial complex making Finland America's new greatest ally. You see, it was Buck and the linguist Sigurd Vettenhovi Aspa who realized Mikael Agricola, the father of the Finnish language, created our language based off the mystical Atlanteans. For example, in Finnish the word for helmet is kypärä. The ky stands for viper and kak and the end rä is invoking the Egyptian god Ra. With the words combined, the word kypärä is actually talking about the sun god's <laughs> liquid wisdom. Now, what this actually meant is that the kypärä actually referred to the Atlanteans' heads, not helmets, 
because the Atlanteans were so wise and full of wisdom that their future Jami also reflected that. So yes, the ancient Finns were like... Toads from Super Mario? Look, I know this information is a lot to take in and it might make you question everything you've known beforehand. It's okay, because even your Buck encourages his disciples to just figure it out all on your own. Question everything! Some people just like to create their own worlds and others on the other hand just like to listen and follow, like the shepherd and his flock. Let's get back to the Christian world with satanic panic. Ideas spread like memes around the globe. Satanic panic arrived to Finland in the 19s, once the satanic panic of America became televised and documented, despite Pekka Seaton and his disciples being active uh, satan worshippers for over 20 years prior to that. Satan only became a problem for us when the television told it was. The masses will always follow something popular or less popular cause because it will help that individual find him or herself in a journey. This book, if no other, is the greatest evidence that all the gods, demons, angels, heavens and hells are real. They are inside of us and it's up to us to determine what kind of beings they are. Metaphors that live inside us archetypes and attributes that help us see the world. The gods are real and it's wonder to see how complex and unique they can be. The gods evolve over time like any other meme. I mean Thor's hammer used to be an axe sometime. The Greek god of war Ares began as a wild barbarian, but as Rome became an imperium, evolved into the legionnaire's tactical war general. Today, Ares would run a fake news media alongside partaking in the military-industrial complex, causing havoc with fake news and black market weaponry. Our Loki has become such a multi-dimensional character that he's taken all new forms for himself. Sometimes he's a woman, sometimes an old man, sometimes a brat and even sometimes a Briton. The world is ever-changing, but its nature is cyclical. Everything that seems new was once done before. Ideas just re-emerge with new flavors around them. Let's conclude this with a wrap-up on the cyclical nature of the Finnish right wing. This book is a real joy to read for a variety of reasons and therefore it can make a great gift for a variety of people. You might be into conspiracy theories, mysticism, UFO sightseeing, folklore, Satan, or, or your fatherland. It's a perfect gift idea for everyone who happens to lean even a little bit onto the right. It doesn't matter are you a conservative, a redneck, or an admirer of fascism, the book will show you that all the debates and arguments regarding nationalism, religion, immigration and social welfare has been happening around repeatedly for over a hundred years. Being right-wing or even a radical right-winger is nothing new in Finland nor anywhere else in the West. It's just thanks to the internet that it has reached an unprecedented media attention. Libertarianism, neo-reactionary movements, Prometheism are just movements that social media has given its face to. Like I mentioned, even the esoteric right wing of bodybuilding, which reads and discusses Nietzsche, already happened in Finland during the 90s. Life truly is cyclical in nature, where the actors just change their roles. I hope you found this video both entertaining and useful. Perhaps the last point I want to make is that uh, I hope you realize that this material world, these political debates and arguments you have with your spouse, friends, family and online strangers, these are cyclical and will always happen. You can accept this truth and continue as you always do, or perhaps realize it's a useless part of your life. Uh, do you want to wait for a savior figure or a satanic figure to come up and stir up your life? 
Do you want to follow some cause that will make you an exclusive member of the secret brotherhood of the Proto-Atlanteans? You have this one life and you can choose how to live it. If you wish to seek this glorious fate for yourself, you can forsake the politics of the material world and find meaning in your inner one. Start writing your own gospels. If you need a framework or a tool for this, you can watch my initial feelings on Friedrich Nietzsche's Das Spoke Zarathustra. Thanks for watching and until next time.